It's a new year, and I think it's time that I finally unveiled the secret project. So, what is the secret project, you may ask? Well, it's somewhat similar to a game that I started last year with, Fire Emblem Fates, in that it's a new installment in a series that I've been a big fan of, that I thought, you know, this is the first time that a new game has come out since I've got a recording device, so I may as well try and record this, and have fun with it. So, once again, what is this series? Well, it's... Okay, uh, let me try that again. It's... Seriously, what's going on here? I think I'm getting some kind of interference from something. No, really, seriously this time, this series is... Good people of Kurain, we can't allow things to go on like this. The Defense Culpability Act has done nothing but produce countless victims of wrongful convictions. The time to act is now. A dragon never yields, nor will he rest until his revolution is complete. On the western edge of the Far East, lies a peaceful country of spirit mediums and mystery, the Kingdom of Kurayin. But now, the flames of revolution are threatening to consume it whole. But things like revolt and revolution were the furthest things from my mind when I first arrived in this land. Yes, this series is a blind run of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney's Spirit of Justice, the most recent game in the series that's come out for the Nintendo 3DS at around September last year. So before we get into anything, there are a lot of things that I have to explain here. First, this series is a major first for my channel, in that I recorded the entire game before posting it. That's why it's taken so long. I've actually been working on recording this game ever since it released. In fact, I started recording right on the release day. I was that hyped for the game. In fact, I was so hyped that I lost sleep several nights before it came out. So what this means is that I've pretty much got a huge backlog of videos that I can pretty much put up whenever I want. But what this also means is that if I did make any mistakes in editing or anything like that, I actually can't go back and fix them. All of these videos are the finalized versions, and I have long since deleted the original RAW files, because RAW 3DS footage from my capture card is about 50 gigabytes per hour, so I pretty much just don't have the space to keep that lying around. So because of that, I produce them into full videos as soon as I can. I've made sure to check through the videos, make sure there's nothing wrong, make sure they're all pretty much fine. I've even uploaded a few videos to YouTube unlisted just to test them out, and it all seems fine, so I think they should be good. But also, because the series has all been recorded in advance, I won't be able to take into account feedback when it comes to the positioning of the screens or audio levels. I've kind of had to guess at what will be okay, and so if the in-game audio is a bit too soft, I'm sorry, it's too late for me to change that now. Something I should also mention regarding the recording method is that I recorded this series before I lost my old laptop's hard drive. So don't worry, I didn't lose any files at all. I made sure to back up the files to multiple locations, but what happened was that I lost my old editing program. This means that the first few videos of this series, so all of Case 1 and a little over halfway into Case 2, will actually be my old recording method that was used early in Fire Emblem Fates. That was with PowerDirector and having to render a video twice, once for each screen. 
after that point, I switched over to Lightworks, which I personally really like for 3DS footage. It means that I can edit both screens in the same video and only have to render it once. It also allows me to do 60 frames per second, so past that halfway point of Case 2, all videos will be in 60fps, which is a nice bonus. But this does mean that the positioning and sizing of the top and bottom screen is going to be different from when the recording methods switch. Starting with the Case 2 one, I tried to mimic the original layout as close as I could, but it's not going to be perfect. Starting with Case 3, I use the same method that I now use as standard for all my 3DS games. So the bottom screen is going to be a bit bigger. Now, you might be wondering why I recorded the entire series in advance before posting, and the obvious reason is spoilers. Spoilers are a very, very big deal when it comes to this series. So for those who don't know, Ace Attorney is a very, very linear visual novel. Every puzzle only has one solution, so if you get spoiled on something, it pretty much ruins the gameplay as well as the story. So, I had to make absolutely certain not to get spoiled in this game, and by avoiding posting anything, I avoided the risk of YouTube spoiler thumbnails, which I knew were going to appear. Speaking of which, I'll tell you right now that all the thumbnails that I plan to use for this series, I'm going to be using a generic image for every case. I will not be using thumbnails from the video itself, just to make sure there's no spoilers anywhere in them. Also, the parts are not going to have actual names. They're just going to be Spirit of Justice Case 2 Part 1, for example. I'm going to leave them as just the part numbers and the case numbers, just, again, to make sure that if someone happens to see these videos in Recommended For You, they won't accidentally spoil themselves on anything. Now, I can't guarantee that the Recommended For You section is going to be completely spoiler-free, because there may be other YouTubers who haven't been as kind as I have been. I would also warn you not to look up the game's official soundtrack, and absolutely do not under any circumstances ever go to the Ace Attorney wiki if you are concerned about spoilers, because that place is completely open when it comes to that. Never ever ever go there unless you've beaten every currently released game in the series. Now, while I've done as much as I can to avoid putting any spoilers into these videos, I can't guarantee that the comments will be spoiler-free. I'll be trying to police comments for spoilers where I can, but I can't catch everything, and there's bound to be people who are going to want to discuss previous games in the series, so you might want to watch out for that. If you want to be really safe when it comes to spoilers for this game, you may want to exercise caution in the comments section. Speaking of which, commenters. I would like to just say something to all of you. I've seen something that goes on very often in the comments section of other Ace Attorney and also Mystery Game in general videos. Often, people who are new to the game will actually post their speculation in the comments section. Wonder about, you know, who did it, what they think happened, and post their own theories. Very often, people who have already finished the game can't resist either confirming or denying these people in the comments. I advise you all, please don't do that. Don't ruin the experience for other people just because you know how things end yourself. Other people don't, and they will have their experience ruined if you confirm or deny their theories. So just let them speculate and leave them alone. That's all I ask. Of course, one big thing that I should mention, if you haven't played this game yet and are planning on getting it, don't watch my videos of it until you've played it yourself. Uh, yeah, that's um, definitely something to keep in mind. So this actually leads into the other thing that I want to talk about. Now that all that spoiler stuff is out of the way, let me explain a few things about this playthrough. Originally, I never thought that I would ever do a commentated playthrough of an Ace Attorney game. The reason being, I was opposed to that on principle for a couple of reasons. The first being that, again, this being a very linear visual novel, watching a game played on YouTube is pretty much the same experience as playing it yourself, and I felt that might hurt sales of the series. The second reason is that this being a mystery game with a lot of foreshadowing and a lot of clues that you need to follow, I didn't like commentated playthroughs because you need to be paying very, very close attention to the text at all times. 
generally everything important is put in the court record for you to view at any time, but often characters do say things that you want to be paying attention to because they'll become important later. I've watched several commentated playthroughs where the player's commentary has distracted me from the text to the point where I missed a very important clue. So that also worried me. Recently though, my thoughts on this turned around. Firstly, there's the fact that it was actually a commentated playthrough that got me into this series to begin with. A subscriber to a channel that I had subscribed to, and it's not actually a very big channel at all, it's uh, not really one of the more famous Ace Attorney playthroughs, but it was quite a while ago, I found this and I thought, huh, you know what, I'd heard about the Ace Attorney series before, I'd heard about all the ridiculous memes like the objections and the miracle never happen, but I never thought it was something that I'd ever be particularly interested in. So I started watching these videos on a whim, and I watched all of Case 1, and then all of Case 2, and then I was like, hang on a minute, this is actually really, really, really well written. I was really surprised. I'd always been a fan of murder mystery shows on TV, but when I saw this game, this was legitimately the best written murder mystery I'd ever seen in my life, and I just could not get enough of it. I found a used copy of Justice For All in my game store, I bought it, and I've been hooked on the series ever since. So, in a way, if commentated playthroughs of these games didn't exist, I would never have become a fan of the series. And it's my hope that through this playthrough, I may be encouraged some of you to go out and try the earlier games in the series if you haven't already. And for that reason, I'll say this. In my own commentary, I have made sure to never directly reference anything that's spoilery from earlier games in the series. Believe me, I've been very tempted to with all the callbacks that are in this game, but I resisted. I've tried to make sure that if you're watching this, you will not get spoiled on anything major in any previous game. Because that's actually how the games do it. Every game in this series is specifically written so that it can work as somebody's first game. Every game tells its own self-contained storyline, and they're very careful to never outright spoil any major reveals from past games. So I only thought it was natural for me to extend the same courtesy in my commentary. So you can pretty much play the series in any order you want, though the only recommendation that I have is don't play Trials and Tribulations until you've played the other two Phoenix games. That game is considered by many fans, including myself, to be the best game in the series, but it has so much more impact if you view it as the end of a trilogy, so make sure you play the other two games first. Anyway, the other reason why I thought that a commentated playthrough might not be such a bad idea is that I've recently seen a lot of big YouTubers do them and start getting into this series, and it's actually really interesting seeing people's blind reactions to these games. Like, what puzzles they solve easily, what contradictions are harder to figure out, where they get stuck, where they don't get stuck, what their train of logic is, whether their theories turn out to be true or false. It is very, very interesting, so I thought it would be pretty fun to do my own take on that. So, yeah, this is what you're going to be getting. And on the subject of my first-time reactions to things, what do I know about this game? Now, like most blind runs, I did see most of the trailers and the official website marketing material in the lead-up to the game coming out. However, Ace Attorney being a mystery game, they generally don't reveal very many details there. There are only three trailers, all of which are quite short, and all of which only sum up the basic premise of the game, and some brief clips from each case that don't really reveal anything out of context. Well, nothing major anyway. Also, the official website revealed several character summaries from cases 1 through 3, and also very, very, very basic outlines of the basic premise of that case. This is all that I know about the first three cases. Cases 4 and 5, they didn't reveal any information on prior to the game coming out, so I was pretty much blind on those. But I'll just say, all of the information they revealed about the characters and cases from 1 through 3 on the official website, yeah, that only barely scratched the surface of these characters, so I still had a pretty fun time here. Everyone had a lot of surprises to offer. 
After the game came out in Japan, I completely blacked myself out from all information on the game, apart from English trailers and the English dub of the anime prologue. Which, in some regards, I don't even think is canon, thanks to certain things that happen in the game, but I digress. Like I said, I stayed off the Ace Attorney wiki entirely, and the only other Ace Attorney related website that I went to was courtrecords.net. Now, the really great thing about courtrecords.net is they know full well just how bad spoilers are for these games. So, their forums have a very, very strict spoiler policy, and I love that. Basically, discussion of any recently released game is totally banned outside of its dedicated sub forum. Any thread that has spoilers in it must be tagged spoilers. And not putting spoilers underneath a spoiler tag is punished by a very lengthy ban. So yeah, they are very, very strict about enforcing spoiler policy for very good reason. And I'm very, very glad for it. Because of this, if you frequent the Ace Attorney forums, it's actually very unlikely that you'll be spoiled accidentally on new games. One other thing is that I do know some of the music in this game. Basically, I downloaded a copy of a spoiler-free OST to the game just after it came out because I was really interested in hearing what the Allegro theme sounded like and a few other of the general court themes, but I didn't hear any of the really spoilerific songs. Basically, all the tracks on this OST are all listed just by their track number and nothing else, so... There is absolutely no context for any of the songs in there, and yeah, so didn't really spoil me on anything significant. Most of my reactions to when certain pieces of music is used is going to be pretty genuine. You might hear at certain points me saying things like, oh, I've heard the first few seconds of this song, but I immediately closed out of it because I thought that it might be a spoiler. So yeah, that's how I approach the soundtrack. A few of the songs just to check where certain things were. I'd heard a few seconds, but if it sounded like something that I'd want to get my reaction to when it played in context, I immediately closed it. Also, one other thing regarding what I know, I will say this in the first video, but I'll reiterate it here. I did play the demo. So, the first few testimonies in case one, I already basically had solved before. But everything from then on is going to be blind. And I will also say that there's quite a few bits of information at the start of case one that were not in the demo, as is very often the case with demos of this series. So, there's a lot that I still was blind on. Unfortunately, here's where we come to a bit of a slight issue. There is one thing that I did get spoiled on in this game, and I want to be honest about it now. TLDR version, somebody spoiled me on the name of the overall villain of the game. This was just a name, completely out of context, without any indication of who that person actually was. But it was a name, and once I saw that name in the game, it wasn't hard to figure out who the big bad was. The thing is, this actually wasn't that bad, because, not to spoil anything, but let's just say the identity of the big bad isn't that much of a spoiler in this game. Unlike some games in the series, they don't really make much of an attempt to hide who it is. But I knew nothing about them besides their name, so all of their motives, backstory, what they're actually guilty of as well, all of that I had no clue about. So it actually wasn't that bad of a spoiler as you might think. So in case you're wondering how it happened, I was looking around a mostly spoiler-free forum thread called I Just Want To Know One Thing. A lot of games have this kind of thing. Basically, before the game came out, there was one question that I wanted a spoiler-free answer to, and that was, are there any bad endings in the game? And if so, is it reasonable to avoid them on a first-time playthrough? The reason why I'd ask that kind of thing is, bad endings in games absolutely terrify me. They're something of a primal fear of mine, and they're part of what kind of discourages me to blind run things sometimes. And an earlier Ace Attorney game had a bad ending that almost is impossible to avoid if you're playing blind. So I asked this question, I said specifically, no spoilers, just yes or no responses only. I thought that would be fine. Unfortunately, somebody answered my question with a spoiler, which was incredibly annoying. 
So, through this spoiler, I caught a very brief glimpse of a name before I quickly scrolled away. I thought, oh no, I've been spoiled on who the main villain is. By the way, I didn't get any spoilers on the context of what this bad ending was. All I saw was a brief glimpse of a name. And so, I was incredibly angry and frustrated. It was just about a week before the game came out. I was so close to being spoiler free. And in my stupidity, I just ruined it for myself. But actually, I was about to get even more stupid. I went on my Tumblr, and I was so annoyed about this that I made a post saying, I'm so angry, I think I just got spoiled on the name of the big bad in this game. And I really should not have done that. Because if I hadn't, I in fact would not have been spoiled. Somebody on Tumblr replied to my post saying, I might as well say the name, and the name outright. And guess what? It was a different name than the one that I would briefly saw on that forum. So, that really, really annoyed me. Now, with hindsight, I know that the second name was the real deal, and in fact, the first name was the Japanese name of a character who was not the big bad at all. So if I had just stayed with that, I would not have even known who it was at all, but yeah, see, this is why I was really tight-lipped about what the secret project was before I started uploading it, because I knew something like this would happen, but yep, it happened, and I got spoiled on the name of the main villain. But here's the thing, like I said, that in itself is actually the least of the spoilers in this game, really. Like I said, the identity of the Big Bad is not a particularly big twist. It's actually made pretty obvious. The real twists come from literally everything else about them besides who they are. All of which I was not spoiled on in any way. So, once you get to the final case, there will be a lot of it that I have genuine reactions to. Don't worry. Oh yeah, I should also mention that as of now, I have played through all of the main cases and the DLC case, but I have not played Asinine Attorney, the two random non-canon bonus episodes yet, because I'm not sure if they're 100% worth it or not. I might do those, but just be warned that I haven't played those yet, so try not to spoil me about them. Other than that, the only thing left to talk about is when this series will be uploaded. Now, since I've basically got the whole thing recorded, I have a nice buffer to upload at any point where I'm normally not able to upload videos, so sometimes you might see large clusters of those videos go up around that kind of time. But otherwise, I plan on uploading videos of this on weekends, and maybe about three videos per weekend. Now, the way that I've structured these videos is, usually three parts is enough for one investigation segment or one trial segment. So, there shouldn't be too much left hanging if I upload three parts per weekend. I'll also warn you in advance that some of these parts are quite long. I've generally split up these videos in what it feels like the most logical places to stop would be, rather than just purely length concerns. So, videos are on average 40 to an hour. 40 minutes to an hour. 30 minute videos are in there sometimes, but they'll be quite rare. Usually they'll be 40 minutes to an hour. If they're a particularly significant part, they may even be over an hour. I've got some that approach an hour 20 minutes, like the longer chapters of my Fire Emblem Fates playthrough. But I do feel like that's the way that I want to do these kinds of videos, because Generally speaking, plot happens in pretty long chunks in this game, and I really don't want to break any of that up. I will say, however, that I have put in some very trollish cliffhangers in some of these videos, so you have been warned about that. Hee <laughs> hee. That being said, I was originally going to give a brief rundown of things that you need to know in general about the series if you haven't played it before, and... I decided not to, because in every new game, including this one, any time that a character from a previous game appears, or a plot point from a previous game is discussed, it's always very quickly recapped for you, so in a lot of ways the game would actually do my job for me. 
All you need to know is that it's a series about wacky lawyer hijinks in the most rigged courtroom imaginable, where you have to defend wrongly accused clients and face off against ridiculously eccentric prosecutors, ridiculously eccentric witnesses, ridiculously eccentric murderers. Everyone in this universe is insanely eccentric. Just... That's pretty much how you would sum up the series. You might also hear me mention something called Japanifornia a few times. If you don't know, the original game was set in Japan, but the localization changed it to California in America for reasons that made sense at the time, because there were no overtly Japanese cultural elements, but ever since then, the series has been getting more and more influenced by Japanese culture, and it's getting harder and harder to justify the localization change. So, fans have come to jokingly refer to the setting as Japanifornia, which became a bit hilarious in hindsight when Big Hero 6 happened. The localization team are actually have a really good sense of humor and actually are well aware of this and have made jokes about it constantly in their blogs. So they all know that it's kind of silly by this point, but the only reason they keep it going is because it's too late to change it now. But if you have not played an Ace Attorney game before, you're definitely in for a treat here. So see you when the playthrough starts.